mind, go ahead and find a seat. Welcome to the 50th anniversary of Queen Anne's County High School, and welcome to the Hall of Fame dinner for the class of 2017. Tonight, uh, we're going to begin with dinner, and I'll begin uh, with a blessing before we begin eating. So if you want my bio, we have please. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and all you've done for us. Thank you for letting us all be together tonight here, celebrating our athletes and their accomplishments here at Queens County High School. Bless us with our advice that we're about to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We will dismiss you by table. Uh, we'll begin in about one or two minutes when Ms. Lee will come around and dismiss your table. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the 12th Annual Hall of Fame Induction Ceremony and Dinner. It's an honor to be in such esteemed company this evening. Your accomplishments have contributed to the excellent history of our institution and live on in the traditions of our athletic programs. They have shaped us into the proud school we are today. Tonight we celebrate these contributions and formally recognize you for the lasting impression you've made on the community. Your induction into the Hall of Fame places you among the great members of our community permanently and serves as a lasting reminder of all you have done. It is because of coaches and athletes like yourselves that we are known as the pride of the Eastern Shore. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations on your induction. And now I'd like to turn the evening over to President of the Hall of Fame Committee, Ms. Marlene Stanley. Good evening, everyone. Before I begin, I would like to introduce uh, those at the head table. We have Dave Wagner, our athletic director, John Marchetto, assistant principal, our new principal, excuse me, our new principal, Amy Huda. We have our guest speaker, Lance Richardson. We have our Sid Pinder, who is operations of... Whatever you want to call me. Yes. <laughs> And our new superintendent, Dr. Kate. <laughs> We'd also like to welcome some board members here this evening, Jennifer George and De uh, Annette DiMaggio down here on the far table. Thank you for coming. And our current Hall of Fame members, and most importantly, our newest inductees, we welcome you all back. Welcome you back to your high school cafeteria. <laughs> I, and I know for some of you it's probably a little surreal. Some of you probably were last in this cafeteria when it was super dark and it had that massive center wall and the tables came down from the center and it was kind of you know drab and it was really noisy. Uh, but now we have this new renovation where there's a little more light coming in. And it, some of you left it just like this, and you're coming back. And now we're having our nice, wonder wonderful induction. <clears throat> but regardless of all of the physical changes that have happened to our high school, what brings us all together here tonight is the love that we have for this school. We have the memories that bond us all together, and it is, it's a part of our living history. All of our lives have had a little bit of Queen Anne's County High School. We have the memories that bond us together. We have all bled green and gold at some point in our four years here. And for some, <clears throat> even more when we watch later generations on the court or on the fields or walking on through the hallways. Our history is what brings us here together this evening. Our history includes the blood, the sweat, the tears of being a student athlete, the dedication of a coach, the enthusiasm of a supporter, our history includes the many successes as well as the challenges. 
It takes a ton of hard work to get to this acknowledgement, and we are excited to recognize these eight amazing individuals this evening. My name is Marlene Stanton. I'm a former student athlete and graduate of Queen Anne's County High School, class of 94. <laughs> and as many graduates do, I left the county for some years, but I was fortunate to come back to Queen Anne's and I now teach and coach within the county. As Hall of Fame chairperson, it's my responsibility to present some background of history to our Sports Hall of Fame. Our history begins roughly 15 years ago. Retired history teacher and coach Rick Thren was the mastermind behind this entire endeavor. Uh, <clears throat> the Queen Anne's County High School was approaching its then 40th anniversary, and with the help of then current athletic director Dave Cooper, they both realized that the high school was in a need of a way to properly recognize and honor those accomplishments of standout athletes and coaches throughout the school's 40 year history. They did a little research into surrounding institutions with similar athletic hall of fames. They formed a committee, bylaws were drafted and then approved, funds were raised, graciously donated, <laughs> and what was once a dream became a reality in October of 2006 with our first inaugural, inaugural class. Talk about a moment in history, we inducted 15 athletes and three coaches, and we were here till the wee hours of the evening. It was so long, <clears throat> but memorable. So from our first to now our 12th induction, we have had countless athletes recognized, many coaches acknowledged, and several supporters of the Queen Anne's County Athletics. However, this evening belongs to our current inductees, eight amazing individuals. I hope these individuals will be reminded of their youth and be able to relive some of their glory days this evening. For this is their night to be honored and for them to be reminded of all their hard work and dedication now present a huge reward. This is your night. This is your night to be recognized. As the athletes are reminded of those memories on the field or the court, please know that this night would make one member of the original Hall of Fame committee particularly proud he consistently advocated for the athletes, and I quote, he felt that this Hall of Fame organization should be geared more to the athletes and that they should dominate the selection process. This quote came directly from a letter by Jody Hyde regarding his withdrawal of his nomination as a coach from the Hall of Fame in 2013. I believe he would be happy about this evening. We have had, we have, excuse me, some extremely dedicated athletes as well as one of his best friends who also was in agreement in constantly withdrawing his nomination as coach into the Hall of Fame. But as history goes, we learn from our mistakes, and I'm sure Dave will never leave a meeting early in the near future. <laughs> in addition to Jody, this evening would not be able to take place without the efforts of all the other Hall of Fame committee members. I would like to take a moment to recognize those members who are here this evening. Jeff Anthony, Jim Apple, if you just want to wave, I can see some of you out there. Yep, Patty Burton, Dave Cooper, Lisa Davis, Tommy Fabry, Donnie Grafe, Brian Kelly, Stephanie Kevin, John Marchetto, Charlie Nesbitt, Dwan Wright, our principal Amy Hudock, and our athletic director Dave Wagner. Every spring, the committee meets to vote on the nominated athletes, coaches, and of course the valued supporters of our athletic program. As our mission states, we want to honor and recognize those individuals who through their accomplishments have brought pride and distinction to our school and community as either an athlete, coach, administrator, or as a contributor to the development and success of the Queen Anne's County High School Athletic Program. With our now 50 years of athletic history, we are bound to overlook someone, so we value the public's input in providing individuals to be nominated. So that's our history, and I welcome everyone to this evening's celebration in recognizing these accomplished individuals and being part of our Hall of Fame history. I hope you will feel the same pride in all of these individuals as the committee did in appointing them to this class of 2017 inductees. Thank you. And we have our guest speaker, Lance Richardson.
Good evening. It's a real honor to be asked to speak here tonight. I was told I was supposed to speak for about an hour, so I <laughs> cut it back to about 55 minutes. But uh, I've always been very proud to be a Queen Anne's County alum. My four years here, sports were a huge positive impact on my life. Uh, it's an experience that carried over through every aspect of my adult life. And I remember back when I was at Queen Anne's, there was several different paths that students typically took. You had the ones who went right into workforce, they worked for a family business or they had to have an after school job and that was their thing. And then you had those who were so wrapped up in some relationship with a boyfriend or girlfriend, they were practically married, they had no time for sports. Um, luckily for me or unfortunately for me, my mother <clears throat> cut my hair and she had no, no formal training so that kind of ruled out the, the whole dating thing. Um, I was you know, able to focus on academics and sports. It's kind of a relief that I'm not being inducted because if my senior picture was etched in bronze for all eternity, I don't know. But um, I can say success in my life is certainly interwoven with the experiences I learned through sports here. In high school, I believe, is the purest level of sports. It's for the love of the game. When you think about society right now and all the problems we're dealing with, gratuitous violence, shootings, terrorist acts, drug epidemics, daily tragedies, you know, that's why this is what's pure about what we still have. And high school brings out the best, I think, in our students. Coaches like Coach Cooper, Coach Grafe, if you can take the most irresponsible segment of our society, our teenagers, and turn them into exceptional athletes and decent people, you're doing something amazing. Um, and you think about youth sports are awesome too, but a lot of times the parents are just insane. So by the time they get to high school, they've kind of learned how to cope with their, whether their kids are going to succeed in sports and whether they can handle it. So what this high school sports promoted was loyalty to our teammates, dedication, hard work, commitment to something bigger than ourselves, which carries over to your career, to your families, so you don't give up throwing the towel. My wife's not here, but um, she knows sometimes I'm difficult to deal with, so I've committed to be the best husband I can. You know, if I can survive wrestling, I can survive marriage. <laughs> <laughs> but sports are certainly a great outlet for our youth. Um, and when I think about just politics, how polarizing it is, racism, bias, everything that's out there that's bad, sports is everything that's good, everything that brings us together. When I started playing sports as a young kid, you know, I was in a neighborhood with other small white kids and um, get to play sports and meet kids of different races and religions and backgrounds. And none of that mattered what they came from. Once you're on a team, they're your, your brothers, your teammates, and you're dedicated to them, they're dedicated to you. It was a beautiful thing. And you look at professional sports now, where you have, it's all about the money, endorsements, free agency. You get attached to an athlete and suddenly they're gone. Um, doping scandals, cheating, everything else. I, I love professional sports, but this, the love of the game here, you take the money out of it, all the other things. Even college nowadays, it's big money. You see recruiting violations, cheating, things like that. Um, so I come back to this, that you, the athletes here, are what it's really about. And why sports? Some people just don't get it. I mean, life is a competition sport. It's uh, you know, very difficult at times. You've got to overcome things. This group being inducted here tonight represents everything that's right about sports. My personal experience as a prosecutor now, I have to go into court sometimes and try murder cases. The judge is somewhat like the referee. It can be very stressful. So, gotta have a burning desire to win, but also play by the rules, be fair. And I think back to you know, what I learned from Coach Schippel in wrestling. You have to go out there on the mat and sometimes wrestle some guy with the demeanor and physique of a gorilla. Um, 
and know you're going to spend six minutes with this guy and he's going to try to rub your face across the mat. Um, if I could survive that, I can certainly survive whatever the courtroom throws at me. And sometimes there's times when I definitely want to just take the defense attorney and put him in a headlock. And <laughs> But, um, you know, you think back to coaches, how they affect your lives. Coach Shippel was a wonderful man. You know, he um, taught me many life lessons, valuable lessons, how miserable practice could be, but you don't give up, you don't quit. Um, coach Campbell back there was my lacrosse coach. Wonderful man. Uh, I still remember the motivational talks he would give us. He recently uh, taught my daughter to drive as well, which I appreciate. <laughs> but the coaches here tonight, like Coach Cooper and Grafe, the, I, I think Coach Cooper said, um, you know, you appreciate all the young lives that have touched you, but the lives you have touched, the, the young men you have molded, are, it's incredible what you've done for so many. Um, unfortunately, I played soccer when I was here, so Coach Cooper was uh, the football coach when I was in high school. Uh, I often think I should have played football, but I don't regret it. But he, um, he was quite a coach. I remember my senior year, we went to playoffs, and uh, I remember going to the Broadneck game, and Coach Cooper had such a good offense that the running back, they would fake, and there would be a decoy, and Broadneck kept tackling the guy who didn't have the ball, and the refs kept blowing the whistle. They couldn't follow the plays. And the ball carrier would still be on his feet, and I was very frustrated. I remember that. You were kind of like Bill Belichick, but much nicer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, know, you, you push those young men to achieve. Uh, you built character. Teach them losing is important, too. You got to overcome, get back up when you get knocked down. Um, and Coach Grafe, I have to tell you a little story about my son, because it's, it's kind of funny. But it, it's the best of what I think sports is all about here at the high school level. My son's a uh, freshman here this year. He's a uh, skinny kid, kind of goofy, but funny. Um, but he's been playing soccer since he was four years old. That was my sport, so I, I you know, coached him and brought him up playing soccer. So this summer he says, I think I want to kick for football because you can play soccer for the high school and kick for the football team, which is really cool. So Coach Grafe was, so gracious and said sure you know he actually returned emails which is rare he answered me and said yeah have your kid come out so season's about to start coach grave had his kicker he had a varsity soccer player i was supposed to get in touch with the jv coach but um i dropped the ball so monday the first game is coming up and i said gary i never talked to the coach so i um i got a hold of him so on Friday, my son goes out. He, uh, at the end of practice, takes three attempts at an extra point, makes them. So the coach says, here's your pads, you're on the team. Mind you, the game's Monday. So um, I said, Garrett, Garrett knows nothing about football. All he knows about football is watching the Ravens with me, and that's just generally a lot of cursing at the TV. Um, but. Um, I said to him, Garrett, you know, as a kicker, you can't uh, stutter as you're coming up to the ball or you're gonna throw everyone off sides. You gotta be fluid. And his eyes are getting big, he's looking at me. He has no idea what I'm talking about. And I said, what if you have to make a tackle? And seriously, he gets out his phone and starts Googling how to make a tackle. <laughs> so I went down to Cambridge for this game. The other parents, don't know who I am and um, I'm sitting among them. Um, I'm kind of worried when Garrett comes out that he's not even going to know how to put his pads on. I was worried that the, that pad for the tailbone might be in the front or something. <laughs> so somebody must have shown him how to put his pads on. But He comes out there and we're going to kick off and I can just read his body language how stressed he is. He's wound so tight he's about to pop and he's got his little tee in the football. And he goes out there and tees it up, and he kicks this ball, and it's awful. It goes about 20 yards. Um, luckily, the up man for Cambridge never expected the ball, so he caught it. And uh, no return, at least, but I heard a mother next to me going, oh, that was awful. So <laughs> these parents have no filters. But um, so Queen Anne's holds them, and then we get the ball back. and. Um, 
then we score. So Gary goes out there to kick the extra point. And the dad next to me goes, bet you five bucks your son makes his kick. And I know it's not very ethical, but I took the bet. Because I, <laughs> um, I figured if ever he's gonna make this kick, it's if I bet against him. So center snaps it, kick is up, kick is good. So very proud moment. And um, you know, then it, JV football is so funny because the next, after that, I don't know what happened, somebody grabbed the tee and then we had to call a timeout because nobody could even find the tee after that. <laughs> But um, since then, he hasn't missed an extra point. He's made multiple extra points. The next kickoff after that, he dropped it inside the 20, went through the receiver's hands, and we got a safety out of it. And I'm going, this is awesome. So here my son is, you know, knows nothing about football, but he's been given this experience, this opportunity. He'll probably never be the next Justin Tucker, but he really <laughs> is just loving this. He says he enjoys it more than soccer. Don't tell his coaches that, Greg. <laughs> So, I mean, that's just what, what can happen to a kid at this level, given an opportunity um, to, to be able to step out of what they're used to and what they know and be able to really um, blossom as a, a young man. Um, and now I know how important the boosters are, the Conleys that are here, because when Garrett's home, he's number seven, and when he's away, he's 15. We need new jerseys. It's very confusing <laughs> to the grandparents. There's actually two number 15s on the team. We can't put them out there at the same time. Um, so we need some new jerseys. Um, our new athletic director is here. I think Coach... <laughs> Over in Anne Arundel County, every high school has a turf field. So I think if Coach Grafe wants a turf field, he should get one of those artificial turf fields. <laughs> so... Uh, Anyway, uh, but, but those of you being inducted here tonight, I, I really hope and challenge you to keep giving back to this wonderful community we live in. I was hoping DeMonte Dodd was gonna be here tonight. I know his family's here. As a, as a Maryland alum, I wanted to meet him and get his autograph. But um, you know, he gives inspiration to our kids in this community that they can be like him. Of course, most of them will never break six feet, but we need point guards. <laughs> And I used to get mad at uh, Turgeon and be like, put Dodd back in there. He's not tired if you want to win this game. But he's, he's been back for camps and clinics for kids. I know that. Encourage him to keep doing that. Um, I'm reading through the bios of people being inducted tonight. Kenny Hartman, there's no profession I respect more than our police officers. And I know your background in wrestling. If any of those knuckleheads in PG County are resisting arrest, I'm sure. <laughs> That's come to help you from time to time. Brianna Ham, working with veterans, it's exceptional. Work that needs to be done. Um, I see Betty Reed's a teacher, been coaching too. Anybody who can give back and coach, we need coaches, good coaches that are not just gonna, you, it's funny when I started coaching four-year-old soccer, there were coaches that they wanted to win more than anything. I'm going, these are four-year-olds. <laughs> You gotta develop some character of these players, how to win with grace, you know, the, the right value. So we need those with this knowledge to give back to this community and, and coach kids. But I mean, nowadays, we, we truly do need sports um, more than ever with our youth. They, they rarely look up from their phones. They flatten couch cushions playing Xbox 12 hours a day. They need sports. They need the discipline and values that can be instilled in sports. Uh, Larry Morris, you give hope to middle-aged guys everywhere that there's a, still hope that one day I can get in the hall. It's not too late. <laughs> so this is an exceptional class being inducted here tonight. Um, keep up your great work in the community. If you don't live here, contribute to the community that you're in. But you truly are a testament to everything that's good about this school, about this community. And... Uh, I, I hope you keep doing what you're doing out there and help our society because we need your character and, and everything you represent. So thank you and God bless. Okay, everybody, we're going to get started with our, uh, our seven inductees tonight. Um, we're going to start with DeMonte Dodd, who uh, this evening is going to be presented by Miss Angela Anderson. So come on forward.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I feel honored today to be here and present my son, DeMonte, died to you. But when I think about, but when I think back to how he never wanted to play football, it made me laugh. He started out with Park and Rec on a different team. One day, DeMonte was so happy to get the ball, he went the wrong way, the <laughs> wrong way. We all, stood, we all still cheered, finally turned around and went to the, and went the right way, he went the right way. I thought after a while, he would stop playing basketball, but never wanted to play football because he was afraid he would get hurt. As you can see, his accomplishments are listed in the program and give insight to DeMonte doing what he needs to do in order to get where he is today. He respects his coaches and team members and work hard to be a team player. DeMonte also showed love towards those in his church and, lo and loved playing drums on Sunday morning. And the small children looked up to him as a gentle giant. We look up to him because he's humble and love each other. I, I could take an hour and talk about all the compliments he had made over the years, but what is more important is seeing the people that came tonight to show their support. As, as they have always done in the past, they are loving and caring people. Thanks to all his coaches at Queen Anne's County who took the time in helping him to advance basketball passion, his basketball passion. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present you in the absence of my son, the honorary, one of the honorees for the night, DeMonte Dye. Good evening. Yes, uh, I kind of feel strange on the spot, but anyway, I'd like to thank each and every one of y'all here tonight. And I would like to thank and accept the award on behalf of DeMonte Dye, my son, who is currently away in China right now playing. He would love to have been here. I know that, but I'm glad to be here for him anyway. He would have loved to be here. In behalf, I'd like to accept this award. Thank you. Our next inductee is Kenny Hartman, and we have Coach Grace coming down to present him. Good evening, everybody. Um, before I get started, just looking out here in the crowd, I just wanna, I know I was here to talk about Kenny, but there's some people out here in the crowd, uh, some that I taught, and uh, I, I'm just amazed at, at seeing you guys now and, and, and proud that I was a little piece, little piece, whether I taught you, coached you, whatever, a piece of your life. And uh, it's really neat to see you guys out here right now. Um, as far as some of the, uh, I'll say older, because I'm old enough, but um, some other people here, I see one of my football coaches here when I was in high school at Cambridge South Dorchester, uh, Mr. Chet Knight, who was a, one of my coaches, and he had such a profound, uh, effect on me as a football player and as a person. I just want to recognize him. Also out here I see Dave Cooper. Uh, I just want to say something to Dave. I'm happy for you, extremely happy because this is well deserved. 
I want you to know, next to my father, you're probably one of the most, impe most important people that uh, I was around during my 20s, you know, had a profound effect on me also. So I want to touch on those, I really do. Um, quick story about DeMonte Dodd, uh, since we were talking about him earlier. Uh, I think it was 2011 maybe, 2010, 2011, one of, the, one of those years. We had a University of Maryland uh, football coach come here who's recruiting the area and he stopped by here at the high school. We had had a pretty successful team um, during that school year. And uh, so he said, Coach, do you have anybody that you think could play at University of Maryland? And I told him, I said, Sir, we, you know, our kids are 185, 190 pounds. You know, we don't have the 6'4, the 6'5 six, six, type guys. Well, while I'm telling him this, uh, down at the other end of the gym, there's Devontae Dodge shooting baskets. And while he's, I'm telling him, you know, we don't have the 6'3, six, 6'4 six, type guys. We're looking down at Devontae at 6'8. So he's saying, <laughs> <laughs> So. He, I, he said, well, Coach, does that young man play football? I said, no, sir. I talked to him year in and year out. He just doesn't want to play. He says, Coach, that's a split end in the making. We need to make him play football. Uh, easier said than done, but whatever. Um, to go on, you know, I'm here to speak for a, a few words about, or on behalf of Kenny Hartman. And uh, again, Kenny, well-deserved. Um, just to tell you a little bit about it, uh, my first year of coaching, we were – Okay team, average team. It's a little background to the getting back to Kenny. This was back in 2000, or a little bit earlier than that, basically. Um, but we were okay team, and my first year coaching, we were fortunate enough to win what they call the Big School Conference, which is really a, a, a neat way of saying that that part of that era where everybody gets a trophy type thing. They kind of divide it up and say, okay, well you guys won this, and and that was it. But so I thought I'd do something. I thought I was a pretty smart guy. All right. And then the next year, we were 0-10, all right? And I found out real quick, I don't know anything. And uh, very humbling experience. But with that group of the kids that we had that were 0-10, I think at that point, Kenny was a ninth grader. And uh, we could see, or I could see, that the group of kids that were coming in, if they could fight through this, you know, this group that had been 0-10, and, and if they could fight through it and stay with the program, we had some pretty promising things here in the future. And uh, Kenny did that, you know, and I can, I, I, I have down here one story that I'd like to share. Um, it was, I think, but Kenny's probably sophomore year and had, again, that good nucleus of kids that were in Kenny's grade. And we were summer workouts and we were out there on the football field before season started. We were flipping tires, um, pulling sleds, running on the track, the whole bit. And we still had that kind of nucleus of that 0-10 group that kind of felt like, you know, the workout wasn't what it needed to be, let's put it that way. It wasn't a stellar workout. And Kenny is a sophomore, I'll never forget this. Kenny spoke up and says, hey guys, that year is over with. Everybody get back on the line. We're gonna do this the right way. And I'll never forget that, because at that point I felt like, you know what? This program is now going to make strides because we have kids that is very important to and they strive to be the best. And Kenny was one of those kids. Um, very fortunate to have him. Uh, a couple things again about Kenny, if, if you didn't already know, he was uh, a football player, again, a four year player for us. He made the all state team honorable mention his 11th grade and 12th grade year. He was all conference. Uh, I think offensive lineman maybe, 11th grade year. In his 12th grade year, one of the very few times that, that I've had a kid be able to do this, he was all conference on both the offensive side and all conference on the defensive side of the ball. So pretty, uh, pretty neat to hear. Um, and Kenny had a way about him, guys, as you know, when you see Kenny, if you haven't seen him already, about six foot tall, and this is back when he was in 10th grade, 11th grade, six foot, about 250, 260 pounds. So Kenny had a presence about him where he had everybody's attention when he did say something. Soft-spoken young man, but when he said something, he had everybody's attention, coaches included. So again, tonight, Kenny, this is your night. Um, you've accomplished a lot here. Uh, one thing I did, I guess I left out was the wrestling part. At one time, Kenny was number one heavyweight in the state of Maryland. Okay, and uh, had a great wrestling career at the high school also. So, Kenny Hartman, guys.
Look at this. Oh, well. picture, right? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <geez. laughs> <laughs> That's an old looking photo there. <laughs> oh, boy. Good evening. Good evening. There's a, uh, a lot of people here tonight. Um, I'm very soft spoken, but I'm very humble to be here tonight. Um, was not expecting this at all. Um, I mean, actually, I was actually caught off guard about two months ago. I uh, got home from evenings uh, working. I wake up, there's a uh, text message on my phone saying, congrats. I'm like, what in the heck is she talking about? And I look at it and I look at the caption, but I was like, oh, okay. Um, really, I, I got uh, inducted in here. Um, I'm very uh, honored and very humbled because I know there's a lot of people uh, better than myself that should be in this hall. Um, having said that, uh, I want to thank Coach Gray for presenting me tonight. He's uh, one of the few people that got me into football, beside my father. Um, but I remember him vividly at Stevensville Middle coming in to recruit us before we had Canalan opened up. He came in and uh, kids, uh, kids that want to sit down said you want to play football coming to this classroom he came in with his uh, videotape cutups from the year before all the different types of uniforms that the kids got to see it, it, it's no different than what we have nowadays i guess it was really cool and i was in absolute awe of him he was the head coach of the football team something i wanted to play for uh i wanted to don that green and gold uniform and uh wear those yellow helmets that we had at the time we have since switched um but um, he saw my size. He was like, yeah, how old are you? I was like, seventh grade. Oh, damn. Give me uh, one more year. And it, uh, it worked out. Like he said, I came in my freshman year. We won my first JV game, beat Glen Burnie, and then we lost the rest. <laughs> uh, we lost the rest. It was very humbling, but we learned a lot. Um, we learned a lot from there. And the group, of, the group of guys we had growing up, uh, the Al Waters, the Frankie Conleys, uh, the Mike Gals, those were that built that team, Jason Boyd's, uh, Jason Watson, all those guys. We all built together, had a nice nucleus crew, and built our program up to what it is today. And I'm very proud that I think my class started that. And um, it was very, very, very helpful. And I'm very happy to see that what we had done, the kids have taken it and made it better. And they've gone on to the state title game. They fell short, but that's a hell of a lot better improvement than what, I, than what we started at, and I'm very proud of that. Um, moving on to uh, wrestling. Um, one of my coaches is here tonight, Mr. Curtis George. Um, the one that's not here tonight, unfortunately, he touched many alive is uh, Andy Schippel. Um, those two taught me how to wrestle, uh, basically. Uh, I can remember Curtis George right back there, minus the wall, um, <laughs> where he would kick my butt daily. But once I got him in a cement mixer, he left me alone. I think he realized I was getting it. I think he realized I was getting it. And I went on to have a pretty good uh, wrestling career. Um, the highlight of that, and I still and I still think finally of this day, and there's a picture floating around. I think Frank or Al has it still, of all three of us. But on a very cold, cold winter February evening in uh, Cambridge, South Dorchester, um, three of our goals were realized, where all three of us swept the uh, the regional championships and went on to states that year, and that was quite honestly the highlight of my wrestling career. Um, through that, through being able to wrestle and uh, play football, I was actually recruited by another Queen Anne's County graduate, Ernie McCook, who was the offensive coordinator at Shepherd University. Um, he recruited me, went up there. Things didn't turn out how I liked it. Uh, blew my knee out and couldn't recover. So um, it just wasn't what it was, wasn't what it was meant to be. But in closing, I would like to 
give a big shout out to my parents, Al and Sandy. Um, without them, I would not be able to been able to do some of the things I did. They made every every sporting event that they could. I can remember vividly my mom waiting up at the top of the hill uh, when she got off work at the Board of Ed to come pick me up from football practice to take me home. Um, and then being at every every match, no matter if we were down in Stephen Decatur or, or Parkside or wherever, they made the trip. They didn't begrudge it. They didn't whine or cry. They said, all right, here you go. And they did it, and I appreciate them for that every day, and I try to do that with my kids I have now. Um, and I just want to say being coached by uh, Mr. Cooper, thank you, my freshman year on JV. That was awesome. And uh, having another inductee tonight, Miss Debbie Conley, Mr. Frank Conley, they still have been there. And they have been there through all my time, and they're still here cheering on children that are still here today. And God willing, they'll be the kids today will be inducted down the road. And there was their support too, and it's been absolutely awesome. And I can't thank them enough. As far as our inductees tonight, congratulations. It's well deserved, and you guys have a good night. Next, we have Frank and Debbie Conley. They will be presented by Frankie Conley, uh, their son. We have um, a historian in our midst, Mr. Jim Apple, who provided a little background history on uh, Frank. And uh, he has a ton of old score books from baseball. And if you. Uh, what were they, Mr. Apple? 1960? Okay, sorry, 71. 70, 71. <laughs> I didn't mean to age you that much. But he, he came to me, unfortunately he came to me after the program was printed uh, and gave me some uh, background on Frank as an athlete. Frank and Debbie are going to be inducted together as uh, supporters of the athletic program. But as a side note, both of them, as you see in the program, have great athletic backgrounds and careers at the high school also. So that encompasses that, that true supporter and we are welcome to have both of them being inducted this evening. Frankie. Good evening everyone. Uh, keep this uh, short and sweet. Uh, just like my father, as you can see, he's not here tonight. He's a little bit shy. so he's. You know, not, not, not real good with, uh, you know, gatherings and big events and stuff, which I'm the same way, but I said, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> um, just listening to uh, Mr. Richardson and, uh, and Kenny and all the athletes that come through this school and are successful, I don't think those athletes would quite be what they are without the support that they have from their parents and coaches. And as you can read in, in your program book, and met them, they're still a 50 yard line of every football game at home, up right in front of the box, cheering on the kids. Even though they're not their kids, they're still there cheering on, and they've been doing that since probably 1985 and before that. Uh, they still have been growing up a year before that, but um, they've been out there just about for everybody, like the home games. They go to all a lot of away games, all the way down to Wicomico County, Worcester County, all over the place. Um, they were definitely thrilled to go to those great stadiums for state championship games. Um, just some things that uh, my dad does. Worked in the county for 38 years. Coached Little League football. Played a lot of softball. Was just recently uh, introduced, introduced into the ASA modified Fast Pitch Softball Hall of Fame. Uh, so which is a really big accomplishment. I had uh, inducted into that too, so it's a short piece to this one. Um, he's just, he's always been there for me, and like I said, he's always been there for a lot of the kids that have been through Queen Anne's County High School. Uh, Mom, 
She's also been there too, a little bit more louder vocal supporter. You probably, like I said, you can hear her on the 50-yard line. That's the one you can hear her screaming. Um, she's uh, worked at Queenstown Bank for 25 plus years and uh, enjoys everyone that coming out and supporting all the athletes. And uh, hopefully we continue to see that for many more years. She's got four grandchildren coming up to uh, the school system that will be in high school in about three or four years, so they'll still be around for a long time. Any of you know who know Larry know that this is going somewhere good. Um, I was the freshman class advisor, my friend and I, and we were getting ready for a week, for re ready for homecoming week. And uh, it was about a month out, and we realized what we had gotten ourselves into with the floats and the game and the powder puffs and everything. I had no idea what I signed myself up for. And there I am, uh, we're sitting there trying to figure out how we're going to get a trailer. Who are we going to talk to? How is this going to work? And somebody said, oh, oh, Larry Morris has a trailer, for sure. He'll, he'll lend it to you, no problem. So I said, oh, that's cool. So can, can you make that happen, whoever this person was? So we're sitting there a long day. I don't know what had happened, but we were both frustrated, my co-advisor and I. And uh, I get a phone call, number I don't recognize. And I, Larry, I have no idea what you said on the phone. You just continued to mess with me for about three minutes straight at the end of a long day. And I hung up with you. And my co-advisor says, hey, who was that? It sounded like a trailer. I go, I think so. I have no idea. And somebody was messing with me. But I think it was Larry Morris. I, I don't know. So I go down. Susie, you're still working here. And I don't know if I just looked at you like I was completely confused or if I said, I think I spoke with your husband on the phone. Your reaction was, yeah, that was Larry. You'll have your trailer. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so uh, with uh, no further wait, Chet Knight for Larry Morris. Just a little slow getting up here. You got one pace, it's slow, that's it. Doing this case at the table. Um, I'm here to represent Larry Marsh. You know what, Larry? I just got a chance to get back eating with you right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A little prank you pulled on me now. How this goes? Nah, I'm just kidding you. They were all on fun. You were just a typical red blooded American. Young man growing up. I'll get back there in a second. I just want to run right on something here to get to a point. It is I don't know if any of you were here when I was standing up here being inducted into the Hall of Fame, but I brought up how the program got started. You know, with, with the Boosters Club, the businesses, the banks, and what have you. And uh, I name a few people, but you gotta be careful, you start doing names. Because at my age, my memory doesn't serve me too good. I don't, I'm not even sure what I have for breakfast this morning. <laughs> Sometimes I gotta go to 7-Eleven, see what day it is, buy the paper. <laughs> what do they call that, the golden years? Uh -huh. uh, I got another name for it, but I can't say it. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, at the end of my speech, I said, uh, I'm not gonna mention any of the ball players I coached them years. Uh, because I know I'll forget some. I, I treat them all the same, maybe a little rough sometimes, but you know the old cliche you heard coaches that have uh, teams say, you know, we're, we're like family. Well, I, I guess that's probably a fair description. Uh, I wanted a good rapport amongst, amongst some players, a little camaraderie amongst the team, 
And I said, but I'll tell you what I'll do. I would put all those players in the early, late 60s and early 70s. We're going back now, you know. <laughs> it's not like yesterday. And I said, I'm going to give them one name. They were warriors. And I, said, I added a little bit to that. I said, uh, some of them were nasty warriors. Well, I got a chance, ladies and gentlemen, to name one of those players tonight. And that's Larry Morris. It's his day. Larry was, was one of the ones that got this program off the way it is today, and it's been very successful. You've got a good man running your program now, Donnie Grave. And Donnie, thank you for your comments. And I know Donnie, and I don't surprise him, he's doing well. Now, with Larry, he was an ordinary one. But he was, he was fun. He, um, well, before I start, uh, Larry, I gotta apologize to you. I, I tried to get some stats on you, but going back in those days, you know, I just, 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 I just, I just, I just couldn't come up with any. The albums that you gave me, that your mother made up for you, were very good. It brought back some great memories and. Pretty obvious, and I know you scored a lot of touchdowns, and I know defensively you were you were very good there. And that's then back in those days, you know, just automatically you went both ways. <clears throat> and Larry was, he had you know, personality plus. I mean, he was all over this. He was. It was he was liked by his teammates, liked by his students, his teachers, his coaches. Uh, he just it just bubbled over. He was very easy to coach, very coachable. And as I looked at that album, he was a heck of an athlete, a great athlete. No matter what sport he took up, he excelled. He was just really good nat. He's a natural. And I'm glad that he came along while I was still coaching. I really do. It was a, it was a joy to coach. He represents that, those, those growing years. And they were growing years. Uh, and uh, Larry picked up things very fast. And he probably had one of the best football IQs out there amongst all the all the ball players, and um, he was just a gem. I wish I had 11 Larry Morris's on my team. It would be something to reckon with, I'll tell you that right now. <clears throat> Larry, well, back then we, we didn't, our numbers weren't very great. I mean, we'd go play some games, and there would be 45, 50 people staying on the sidelines. And here we are, our 2025. They probably, hey, well, you, you left some people home, didn't you? No, that's it. That's all we got. And, you know, we didn't really have any specialty teams. Uh, the offense was a punk coverage. And the, Defense was a punt return, and we and, and you know we did put some new faces in on the kickoff team, and you know, on the punt return we probably put somebody who could catch a football. It was necessary, but in the same event, uh, they, they were enjoyable years, and uh, it, it was just it was just a, a fun group. Ladies and gentlemen, when Larry comes up here to do his thing. I appreciate him because he's the one that got the program where it is today, or, or helped. I mean, you know, it, it took uh, more than Larry, but that, 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 that's the kind of warriors. That he's one of the many, many warriors I was talking about. And <clears throat> well, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I'm going to leave it to you. <laughs> Larry, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
appreciate it. Of course. Yeah, that's an ugly picture, but <laughs> I don't think I paid that enough. But uh, it, anyway, just like the, like everybody else, it's a humbling experience, and really appreciate uh, you guys, the committee, and everything. You know, thinking of me and uh, putting it out there, uh, remembering some of the old stuff and all like that. Um, but like a lot of people, you kind of backtrack and you catch up to some of these people after being here. And um, Frank Conley is not so quiet as they make it out to believe. <laughs> I played baseball with him and I played football with him. And yes, he was a little quiet. I never saw him being intimidated on a football field. And the catcher, he had a little nasty uh, sense of humor. I, I was a pitcher. I, I wasn't very good, but I could throw hard, and I either struck them out, hit them, or walked them. <laughs> and we played this one team that they had a, they had a, a good a couple good hitters on there, and the guy taught me, Ed Cook taught me how to throw a changeup. And he said, you only throw this to the, you know, the real good hitters. And so I cranked out a right good fastball on this one guy, Smokey, you guys might, some of you remember him, but from North Carolina. and. Uh, where we were playing, we had a fence at 300 feet, and we had a hedge about 25 foot beyond that that was about 30 foot tall, and he hit that ball over that hedge like it was going out of style, but it was foul. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I don't know if you were hump and down, I don't know. <laughs> then I threw him another one outside, and he, just, he got a chip of it, and I thought, well, this is the time to throw the change up. And so, well, Frank's catching, and he knew I was wild as all get out, and I threw this change up, and it was a perfect changeup. And this guy swung real hard, went down on his knees swinging, and Frank just kind of fell forward as he caught the ball because it was so slow, and he laughed at the guy. <laughs> and I thought, that's my Frank, man. <laughs> you rub it in, that guy didn't hit anything the rest of the game, you know? But uh, anyway, like I said, Frank was, he, he was a great athlete and, and really enjoyed being around him and everything. And of course, we got some. When we started this program, and he put a lot on me, but I didn't have anything to do. I was just a player. And I, what Coach Knight did with the players that we had on our team was just inspired us all to be everything that we we could be. And you always hear that, you know, players love playing for a great coach that can inspire them and bring the best out in them. And um, he did an outstanding job on our team. And here we were, a team that was just coming up in the first year that we played a varsity schedule. We weren't even considered uh, contenders for anything other than last place. And the two teams that were in, that we played against that were supposed to take it all was North Carolina and Cambridge. And it was a toss up, you know, who was going to win it and stuff. Well, we were fortunate to play North Carolina before we played Cambridge. and. Um, they had switched from having Cambridge their homecoming team, uh, homecoming game to Queen Anne's because it was a shoe-in. Well, we won that game and we enjoyed it. I'm not gonna say a word, Dave. And, um, but then we had to play Cambridge and they had, there was a little bit more thought to that game and everything. And when we played Cambridge, we held them, it was like 0-0 to the final, seconds of the game and we were down on their red zone or our red zone down there and a pass was thrown tipped at the line and one of their guys intercepted and ran it all the way back and you talk about a heartbroken team to give you an idea how much our team was together and into it when Chet came back on that bus when we were all getting ready to leave there wasn't a dry eye <laughs> on that home on, on that uh, bus just because we had lost and we so quickly had just you know lost it in those few moments but you know as, as everybody stands up here and tell you they, they've all got their sport and obviously these coaches more so but we love the sport you know and whether it's a particular one like it was with me football or a lot of these others it just doesn't make any difference it's about loving the sport and Give it your all, and if you're fortunate, you'll have some coaches along the way like you guys got here. Thank you. So 
next we have Betty Weller Reed. Uh, Betty, I get to know on a, two different levels as an inductee this evening. And she's one that came back to the county and is a teacher within the county. And she's my, my uh, middle child. God bless you there. Uh, third grade teacher. So come on down. Uh, Mark is going to be presenting for Betty. Good evening, everybody. Uh, first, congratulations to all the other inductees uh, this evening. Um, so Betty really wasn't sure who she wanted to have introduce her tonight. Um, she was kind of torn, uh, so she nominated me, or maybe I nominated myself, I'm not really sure. Um, but nonetheless, she gave me uh, special instructions to keep it short and to promise I wouldn't embarrass her. Um, with that being said, in true honesty, I've known Betty now for uh, 25 years, and she's always been a standout athlete. Um, Mr. Grape was our gym teacher back in Southersville. Um, even back then, you know, we played all types of different sports, from floor hockey to basketball, flag football, a lot of it was co-ed. So if you were a team captain, you wanted Betty on your team and vice versa. If she was the captain, you wanted her to pick you because you knew you were going to win. And twofold, it was that she was uh, going to dominate all the other girls and most likely was going to dominate most of the other guys as well. Um, so again, she was a fantastic athlete. I think all the accolades in the program sort of speak for that. I think it's the things that you don't see that mean the most. It's that hard work, that work ethic that you put in kind of behind the scenes to stay late for uh, practice, um, to make sure that your left hand's as good as your right hand, or if not better, same with your left foot. Um, and that's really what Betty is. I mean, she's a multi-sport athlete. Um, she took that to college, uh, where she was a two-time All-American of Washington College. She was recently inducted into their Hall of Fame, again, as a dual sport um, athlete. So there's a lot of things to be said for that. Um, when I look out at this crowd, it's uh, kind of funny for people maybe to hear me say this, but I think really what it comes down to is a student athlete. And that's really what Betty was. And I think that's so important today. Um, we have three kids and they're all playing sports, but uh, academics are more important than anything. You know, it, it's great to be a fantastic athlete, but it's only a piece of the puzzle. You, you have to make sure that you have the academics to go along with it. And that's really what Betty, um, did through high school. Um, she balanced things. You know, I looked at our yearbook. Um, <laughs> she was actually voted to be, uh, I guess, best athlete is what it was back in 1999. It was uh, Gabrielle Reese, I, I believe, was the uh, person that they used for that. Um, so it, it truly is an honor. Um, so I'm going to kind of wrap it up at that. Betty, come on up. Congratulations. seen this picture in a long time. <laughs> Thank you so much for this honor tonight. I feel really privileged to be a part of such a talented group of athletes and supporters. Um, congratulations to all the inductees this evening. It is kind of neat for me, um, Mr. Grafe had said, you know, looking out into the crowd and seeing some of um, some people that you maybe imparted a little bit. One of the inductees this evening, I also coached just a little bit back when she was shorter than me. So it's kind of nice for me to see that as well. Um, thank you to the Hall of Fame committee for giving me this opportunity to kind of reflect and look back at this memorable time in my life. Um, also, thank you to my family for being here. They were such a great um, support for me in high school, being on the sidelines, cheering for me, um, and that means a lot. Um, athletics was a really important part of my life, and definitely in high school, all of my memories kind of go back to being on a team. Um, it just kind of felt right for me, which, um, and they all revolve around my teammates as well. So um, whether we were on the field or on the bus, heading to get away games or having pre-game dinners together, we spent a lot of time together. Lots of laughs, lots of inside jokes. Um, soccer and lacrosse are both team sports and working as a team is really important in the success of those teams. And I wouldn't be here tonight if it weren't for the work of my teammates as well. I also have to thank all of my coaches. I was fortunate to be on three different teams for four years, so that gave me an opportunity to work with a lot of different coaches, and um, they were able to instill in me a lot of, a variety of their strengths, so I am very appreciative of that as well. 
My experiences in athletics have molded me into the person that I am today, a teammate, a teacher, a wife, a mother, a friend. Um, I'm very blessed to be an athlete, and I'd still like to consider myself an athlete, although this, you know, I'm not defending corner kicks or running fast breaks anymore. I'm like chasing my four-year-old around to put his shoes on or trying to convince my daughter and son that I know how to play soccer and I know the rules. Um, it's just a little bit different now. I love to tell my third graders, Henry Stanton included, that you know I went to high school right across the street at Queen Anne's County High School. I'm proud to be a lion. I still bleed, bleed green and gold. I am very proud to be a mom of future lions and can't wait to be on the field as a supporter and not necessarily a, an athlete anymore. So I'm very excited about that. I hope I can continue to teach and inspire my children and all the students that I teach um, the way I have been taught and inspired by all the coaches and the teammates that have also inspired me. So thank you, Queen Anne's County Hall of Fame, for creating another memory for me to cherish and reflect on. Okay, uh, next we'd like to welcome uh, Mr. Jeff Anthony up to the podium. He'll be uh, presenting Miss Breham. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, sorry, I got a little hoarse voice tonight. Just got back from a soccer game, which we were winners against James M. Bennett. And uh, congratulations to the rest of the inductees tonight. Uh, it's a great honor for all of you to be inducted. And I want to thank uh, Bree Ham for asking me to introduce her. Of course, she might not think that after I get finished here. <laughs> uh, first time I met Bree Ham. She was uh, playing soccer on a travel team that Tommy Davis coached, and he called one day and asked Mike and I, Mike Kern, current head coach, soccer, to come out and watch the kids coming up. They were in eighth grade, coming in ninth grade, so yeah, we went there to watch. And as it would be, the referees didn't show up, so Mike and I ended up refing, and so we didn't get to see much of, of the talent we had coming up. So. But anyway, um, a few of the stats from soccer um, that, I mean, are just astounding as, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, she was a four-year starter uh, for us, and those four years we won four North Bayside championships. Uh, our North Bayside record was 36-2, and two, uh, and our overall record those four years was 54-12, and 12, and that's the most wins in a four-year period of any any group and that was the you know four years that she played and we won one Bayside championship game and if I remember correctly I think she was the one that knocked in the penalty kick to win the game for us win the championship and we're the only North team ever to win a North uh, win a Bayside championship so you know that's quite an accomplishment when I talk with her a while back she asked how we put up with the girls and team like that and I said that's pretty simple alcohol <laughs> <laughs> but having having that group of girls was, was such a easy thing to coach easy bunch to coach because they I mean we hardly had to do anything they they had the girls in line doing everything doing you know, we just basically put their names in the lineup. So, um, as far as her lacrosse goes, um, I didn't get to see a lot of her games because I'm a very superstitious person. And the girl, they'd always ask, "Are you coming to her game tonight? Coming to her game?" I said, eh, "I don't know. I'll try to find something to do." But anyway, the first game I went to watch. Well, I went to watch my niece play. I didn't really watch Queen Anne so much. The second game I went to, one of the players on Queen Anne's tour ACL. I said, well, that's not good. So then the kids called, hey, you got to come to the state final game. I said, well, okay. Went to the state final game, and they tore another ACL. So I don't think I'm going to go to many more lacrosse games. Uh, so then she goes to college over at Towson on a lacrosse scholarship. And one night, one Saturday evening, we were, my wife and I were sitting home watching TV and, and I never watched Channel 2 News, but 
for some reason it was on channel two came on and those sports were getting ready to come on. So I thought, ah, okay, I'll watch it. Well, what first thing they show, Bree Ham scoring her first collegiate goal. And I hope she got the clip of it because I don't think she saw the ball go in the net because she was laying on the ground with about three girls laying on top of her. So. Okay, now here comes good. Can I tell the foot story? Okay. Before we had Bermuda fields and Parks and Rec took care of fields, we, we had some pretty rough fields to practice on and we had several girls had tweaked ankles and we didn't really have a full-time trainer then so I became kind of a trainer and was taping ankles. And I get there to one day and there's like five girls lined up to get their ankles taped. I said, what are you all here so early for? He says, we want to get our ankles taped before Bree gets here. And I said, why? And they kind of all in unison said, her feet smell. <laughs> I said, it can't be that bad. And they said, oh yes it is. And it's so bad, her mother makes her put her feet out the window when she's driving home. <laughs> so Bree shows up and, yep, they were right. <laughs> I was looking, trying to find a couple quotes that best describe her, Bree, and uh, I found one, Coach Lou Holtz said, Ability is what you're capable of doing. Motivation determines what you do. Attitude determines how well you do it. I think that's fitting. And another quote from John Wooden. Success comes from knowing that you did your best to become the best that you are capable of becoming. And with that, it's my pleasure to introduce Bree Ham, new member of Queen Anne's County Sports Hall of Fame. Jeff. Um, first and foremost, this is definitely a step up from junior year. He got a plaque for me, Smelly's Speed Award, so <laughs> definitely a big step up. But um, I'd like to thank everyone for being here tonight, uh, for nominating me. It was a big surprise just getting out of school a year ago. Um, and congratulations to everyone else that was nominated. I would like to take a, a second and a huge thank you to my coaches, Mr. Jeff Anthony, uh, Mr. Mike Kern, my lacrosse coaches, uh, Ms. Beth Armstrong, Ms. Santos, as well as Mr. Abel. Uh, I wouldn't be here without them today. Um, I wouldn't have made it through four years of college without texting them, calling them, getting me through. Um, and an even bigger thanks to my family, my mom especially. Uh, she's the reason I'm here today. So thank you guys. We have Dave Cooper who will be presented by Patty Burton. Before she comes down, oh, before she comes down, I just wanted to say, Mr. Cooper was never one of my teachers um, or coaches in that regards, but you were always a huge supporter, and I, I value that. And now, as a colleague, I truly do. And I'm so glad you left that meeting so that we could get you in the Hall of Fame behind your back. So if we could have Patty come on down, please, to present this and induct our Dave Cooper into the Hall of Fame. Is that good? I keep shrinking, so. <laughs> Hi, y'all. Um, I would as well like to start tonight in congratulating all of the new inductees into the Hall of Fame. Um, I always think that it's, it is a well-earned um, accomplishment and I think each and every one of you should be proud of yourselves. My task tonight is to introduce a man that really needs no introduction. So many here tonight, others not here, could have easily given this introduction. With that said, I am truly honored and humbled to be speaking tonight on Dave's behalf. David told me that we go back a long time, which is true. 
He was a year ahead of me at Salisbury State, where he was, of course, the big man on campus as quarterback of the first program at the college. After graduating, he returned to his home high school, North Carolina, to teach phys ed and to coach. I began at North Carolina the following fall. It was very evident from early on that Dave was well respected by students, athletes, parents, administrators, community. Our early coaching days, as with all coaches, included learning lessons from our experiences. Do you know the ones, coaches, where you can't bite your lip hard enough to keep your, keep your mouth from saying something stupid? <laughs> or your clipboard gets slammed before you can regain control? Anything to fight for our players was our motto. After finishing a softball game one afternoon at North Carolina, I headed to finish to watch the rest of the baseball game. As I got closer, I noticed David was standing on the top of the football stadium bleachers overlooking the baseball field. And I'm thinking, is there an advantage to him standing way up there? Come to find out, sure enough, he had been ejected. <laughs> but I believe he was still sending signals down <laughs> from above. <laughs> there are many stories Dave could tell about me and my coaching. I was a little slower learning those lessons than he was. We did some creative teaching at North Carolina. Of course, it was the disco days. And Sally had Dave taking lessons with her. So, oh yeah, we were going to teach this to the children. <laughs> David had to teach me the steps so we could demonstrate. Our coworker, some may know Mike Cutright, crazy Mike Cutright, was the DJ. And we turned that gym into a disco ballroom. <laughs> I have never really been sure if the kids liked it as much as they appeared to be having fun or if they really felt sorry for us <laughs> trying so hard. <laughs> After six years, David took the head football coach position here at Queen Anne's and I headed back to full-time grad school. But in December, Dave gave me a call, said there happened to be a phys ed positioning position opening here at Queen Anne's in January. I applied and once again we were at the same school. About the same time I moved to Greensboro, which was Dave's home community, and that is when I met his mother, Miss Leo. We were forever running into each other at the post office and after greetings she never ever failed to ask me is David behaving himself <laughs> and you will call me if he is not. <laughs> what a lovely lady. So I understood between his upbringing and of course his wife Sally, David had no other choice than to be a really nice guy. <laughs> he adored his two daughters which are here tonight and son-in-laws and now two granddaughters. No football players, but an extremely proud father and now proud grandfather. Here at Queen Anne's, we continued teaching together and of course, both, both busy coaching. Looking back, I embraced the good times. We survived some rough times, but we sure did laugh a lot. We were surrounded by the best co-workers, Charlie Nesbitt, Gloris Pinkett, Andy Schippel, and later, Donnie Grafe. There are just too many stories to tell, many of which are at the expense of Miss Glorstein Pinkett. <laughs> <laughs> David is the master of telling these stories, so I'm not even going there. I do finally remember morning hall duties with David and Kaywood, sharing Seinfeld and Barney Fife stories. <laughs> My stomach would ache from laughter heading into first period. To be serious, David was not only a great teacher and a great coach, 
but was without a doubt the best AD Queen Anne's County could ask for. Again, he is a man of great character and respected by all. Overseeing the position at two high schools was no easy task, but for so many years he accomplished it with great composure, with grace, and a few gray hairs. <laughs> His support was unending. How many nights he was out doing just that, only Sally would know. I can't describe David any better than these quotes from coaches, athletes, and co-workers upon his retirement. Mark Wilhelm, he was the epitome of what an AD should be. Brian Sufanowski, I believe Coach Cooper is absolutely one of the most positive, influential men that I have ever worked for. Dale Beecraft, Dave has always been the voice of reason and the calm in the storm for me and for many others. Kim Rementer, Dave always had a way of diffusing a stressful situation. He genuinely cared about all of his coaches. Bert Brott, he was unfailing supportive. He can correct people without their knowing they've been corrected. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> Nancy Morris, I remember Dave as being the person who loved helping all students. Dave taught many years in, with the Level 5 program here at the high school. And finally from his secretaries, Betty Lee says, always a gentleman and the easiest person to work for. Nancy Parks from Ken Island, he led by example and he is a great team builder. David, who has been said was instrumental in the development of the Queen Anne's County High School Athletic Hall of Fame, has refused to be nominated year after year after year. He wanted others to get in. Well, you've already been told he kind of slipped out of the meeting early and before the door hit him in the behind, he was unanimously nominated <laughs> into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> there is no one, absolutely no one, more deserving than to be in this Queen Anne's School Athletic Hall of Fame than David Cooper. It's my co-worker, my boss, most importantly, my friend, Mr. David Cooper. I'd like to say, I'm not sure how this got done, but I'm so thankful the pictures they use go back a few years. <laughs> um, and Patty, thank you. What, what, what an honor to work with you all our years together. Um, I, um, I have some remarks here somewhere, I'm sorry. Um, I, I, this is my vow to all of you. I will never leave a meeting early again <laughs> in my life. Um, but it is a great honor and, and it, it is very humbling um, because I do feel as Jody Hyde and I had this discussion many times about, you know, they don't need to be putting, you know, like us in, although he, nobody deserved it more than him. Um, until every deserving athlete goes in, and we're, we're not there yet. But I, I am humbled by this, especially to be voted in by your peers. Um, but I have to tell you, I, I was feeling pretty good about, you know, it is so nice to be included. And my friend George Ickes, and some, <laughs> some of you know George, uh, a long time teacher in the county and coach with us and Donnie worked with him at Sullivanville, probably speak better than I, but so I was telling George I had to leave the meeting early and, and you know I got inducted and George said, Well well Dave, um, I understand they're run, running low on deserving candidates. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
that, that would be like my mother. And if you were listening closely, I know it's getting late. Her name was Leo. I, I don't know. I, I don't get that, but that was her name. But she was a character, <laughs> as we, some of us can, can vouch. Um, I, I'd like to thank um, my family, uh, my wife Sally and our girls. Um, there's really a lot of nights out. Um, when you do this job, and she never complains, just I'll see you when you get home. Um, I'd like to thank the many great administrators uh, that I work with, and, and Murr Darty means a lot for me to you come back. Um, we had a lot of fun together. Um, all the great coaches, support staff, Betty Lee, who I know Dave can vouch, you know, makes our job easier but especially the athletes, all the wonderful athletes that we have had come through Queen Anne, and as evidenced by tonight's inductees. And just a couple quick things about each of them. I know with Kenny Hartman, Kenny Shepard, and I got to know Ernie McCook, who Kenny mentioned very well, and Ernie would tell me how well Kenny was doing, and then when he got hurt, he couldn't continue, but what a wonderful, hardworking young man he was. Um, and Bree, I see your name in the Baltimore Sun. I, I love to read a newspaper, and I go, that, that's our girl, you know, it's <laughs> such pride. Um, and Betty seeing, you know, two-time All-American at Washington College and reading about her in our local paper, and, and also, you know, to, e even at Division Three, two-time athletes playing two sports is almost unheard heard of, and for her to do that and have the accomplishments there, is just incredible. And DeMonte, we're certainly how proud of, of him we are being in, in China and playing, but we we're so hoping he'd be here tonight. Um, my wife uh, right here taught DeMonte in pre-K. Um, <laughs> um, and I have to say, you know, a lot of people know that and, you know, that follow Maryland basketball and they'll ask Sally, well, was he tall then? And she said, yeah, he was pretty tall, but he really had big feet. <laughs> right? <laughs> but I, I have to say, you know, as great as it was to watch him on TV, and, and we would go over to College Park a couple times a year and watch him, we were especially proud of how he conducted himself and represented our community. Um, Larry Morris um, was kind enough not to say it, but I did go to North Carolina, competed against Queen Anne and Larry in football and baseball. I know we never beat you. Um, <laughs> we tried, and I, and I really mean this. I, I felt like Larry was the best high school athlete that I saw in my years going through, through high school in the early 70s. And Frankie Conley was a great high school catcher. We, really, we played American Legion baseball together. Um, but I know, and, and for Debbie and Frankie, how um, dedicated they were and all the things that you've done. And I've come to some games and I see you guys sitting under, under the uh, press box with Coach Graves' um, mom and dad. And, you know, I've said this a lot because boosters can be a great thing, but Woody Hayes, the Ohio State football coach had, a, I think, is attributed to him that having a booster group is like organizing your own lynch mob. Um, sometimes some folks may want to try to tell you what to do. Um, I know Frankie and Debbie not like that, as evidenced by when Frankie stopped playing. You know, they're still here. You know, that was almost 20 years ago. And um, that, that's true boosters and, and true fans. Um, I, I can tell you, I, I'm so proud of this school. It was a privilege to work here and um, be a father of two graduates. And thank you for this great honor. I really appreciate it.
Again, congratulations to all our inductees. It's well deserved, and we're, we're so excited to have you as new plaques on our Hall of Fame down the hall. I hope everyone gets a chance to go take a look. A few things in closing I would like to remind everyone. There were some yellow and green papers floating around on some of the tables. I hope you took a moment to read the Queen Anne's County High School Alumni Association newsletter. Uh, many of us that were here, that graduated from here, uh, they're asking for their, your support. Uh, it's an amazing way to display your pride and become a member of this great organization. Uh, one of their main purposes is to promote and support educational and career development opportunities for our graduates. And they are to be commended. They have now donated over $25,000 in scholarship support to members and direct descendants of Queen Anne's County High School. And for those alumni that are also around for this homecoming weekend, please consider attending their open house. There's also flyers on the table um, this Sunday at 2 p.m. And it's to celebrate the, our school's 50th anniversary. They're going to have tours. They're going to have some of the videos that Jeff Strait worked so hard on, uh, on the, in the front lobbies and other activities. And in regards to our scholarships, please consider one that is close to our hearts here at Queen Anne's County and the Hall of Fame Committee. The Jody Hyde Scholarship Fund is set up in memory of our beloved teacher, our coach, and our Hall of Fame committee member. Due to Jody's passion with basketball and his 24 years coaching women's basketball, this scholarship is given to a female senior basketball player in Jody's memory. And there is information in the program uh, on how to donate. And we'd also like to remind the public of those graduates who are deserving of the Hall of Fame um, award. The nomination forms can be found uh, right here at this front table as you leave, and it's also on the high school website for your convenience. We need, to, we need to know those names and we need to know those athletes that are missing in our gaps of our committee members. Uh, also, before you leave, there is a mural being painted in the high school gymnasium for the celebration of the 50th uh, anniversary. And we're asking for um, you to come down, take a look. Uh, our plan is to raise donations for a new marquee out front. Uh, and it's a fabulous lion mural. Please go down the hall and take a look. So uh, on behalf of the entire Hall of Fame committee, I would like to personally thank many individuals, especially um, Stephanie Kevin, uh, to make this a, a night uh, as it is and as seamless, and especially Miss Betty Lee, where she ever she is now, our athletic secretary. Her support and dedication to this evening shines with all the details that she does contribute. Um, and an additional thank you to Sodexo for our dinner and Eastridge Gardens for our flowers. Uh, as we conclude, we ask to have all the newest inductees please meet in the Hall of Fame hallway for additional pictures. And um, thank you all for coming. Have a safe evening. First, Devontae Dodd. Brianna Ham. Unfortunately, Devontae and Brianna were not able to attend today, but please give them another warm round of applause. Next, we have Larry Morris. Debbie Reed. Dave Cooper. Kenny Hartman. And rounding on our class, Frank and Debbie Conley. Please join us in congratulating them with a warm round of applause.